Welcome to the Migraine Miracle Moment. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Turknett. I'm a neurologist, migraine specialist, migraine sufferer, and author of the book, The Migraine Miracle. In this podcast, you'll learn all about how to find your path to migraine freedom without pills. Let's get started. Hey, Bee Slayers. So in this episode of The Miracle Moment, I'm going to share with you a really fascinating and really important study. Um, it's one that shows how the brains of people with long-standing migraines are different and different in some really surprising ways. Um, one of the things that I talk about often, uh, as some of you may know, is mindset or how powerfully our thoughts or the stories that we tell ourselves about the events in our lives, how powerfully those things impact our health. And this study is a really powerful example of that and one that's directly relevant uh, for migraineurs because it's a study of people with migraines. And I also thought this would be a good time to cover it uh, as we just launched another 30-day uh, migraine miracle jumpstart challenge. So as part of that challenge, um, everybody in the challenge goes through the Beast Slayer Training Academy together. And the first uh, module in the Beast Slayer Training Academy is all about uh, mindset. And there are several reasons why that is. Um, another reason is that this month, inside of uh, Migra Neverland, for our book club, we're reading the book uh, Cure, that's C-U-R-E, by Joe Marchant, M-A-R-C-H-A-N-T. And that book is all about uh, the science behind how uh, the mind influences the body and how it influences health. It's really an area that's uh, exploding lately uh, as finally sort of uh, research is taking this area seriously. Um, as, and there's a whole robust body of uh, evidence and knowledge now about um, the many ways in which mindset influences health and biology. Um, so that's a great book, and we're discussing that uh, in our uh, Migraine, uh, Migraine Neverland uh, book club this month. And if you want to learn more uh, about the Beast Slayer Training Academy, uh, you can go to mymigrainemiracle.com forward slash academy. And if you think you're ready to go all in with the mig- with the uh, Migraine Miracle plan and you want to join us in Migra Neverland, which also includes a membership to the Beast Slayer Training Academy, plus a whole ton of other ro- resources, uh, then head over to mymigrainemiracle.com forward slash end of migraine. And remember, when you register, if you enter the coupon code MOMENT, M-O-M-E-N-T, when you sign up, you'll get $30 off membership as a thank you for being uh, a listener to the Miracle Moment. All right, so on to the study. So this was published in 2014 in the uh, Society for Neuroscience's eNeuro Journal. And in the study, they looked at 17 people with migraines and 18 control subjects, so 18 people with, without migraines. And specifically, they looked at their brains. So they used a fancy MRI uh, uh, sequence where you can look not only at the structure of the brain, but also the um, functional connectivity, so the ways in which different regions of the brain are connected with each other. And so obviously they were looking for differences between the, the brains of controls and the brains of people with uh, longstanding migraines. And indeed, uh, they did find differences. So uh, there were several uh, differences in the ways in which the brains of migraines, uh, migraineurs were connected. Um, and that alone was pretty interesting finding. Um, uh, and it d- also looked like most of those changes were probably from r- the result of having migraines rather than vice versa, so rather than those changes being the reason why they had migraines. It was more likely that uh, the migraines were leading to those particular kind of changes. But the most interesting and most relevant for our discussion here was that they also looked at correlations between uh, the uh, level of pain catastrophizing in each subject and any specific changes uh, in their brains. So uh, what is uh, pain catastrophizing? So there's actually uh, what's known as a pain catastrophizing scale. And it's a series of questions. And the, the intent of those questions and the intent of the scale is to measure the degree to which an individual kind of focuses on or dwells on their pain. So imagine that you have kind of two people who have migraines of equal intensity, frequency, everything's the same, except kind of how they think about uh, uh, the having migraines and their experience of it. So uh, one person uh, kind of focuses on uh, everything but their migraine. So, you know, as soon as the migraine's gone, they don't think about it anymore. They don't t- talk about their migraines. They don't dwell on how painful they are. They just kind of move, they just ha- they experience them and then they're gone. 
And then the other person kind of, uh, even when they're gone, focuses on the migraines, you know, shares uh, how bad they are with others, uh, posts on Facebook about it, uh, you know, just just in general kind of dwells uh, on how bad migraines are and kind of spends a lot of time worrying about when the next one might strike and so on. So if you can imagine kind of the two extremes there where one person kind of spends no time, mo- no mental time kind of thinking about the, the negative aspects of migraine and another t- another person spending all of their time uh, dwelling on it, the person, the latter person is going to have a very high pain catastrophizing scale, and the other person will have a very low pain catastrophizing scale. And so, what they found was that there were that there was a significant correlation between the degree of pain catastrophizing and uh, certain functional uh, connectivity changes in the brains, uh, in, in their brains. And moreover, those changes were, were occurring in areas that were likely resulting in an enhanced experience of pain. So in other words, um, dwelling on the, on the pain was creating changes in the brain that were then making the experience of pain worse and uh, a process that probably continues to amplify over time. Now, there are other lines of uh, evidence from other pain studies that shows this kind of phenomenon um, occurring uh, with pain that the more you focus on it, um, the worse it tends to get. And this is an illustration of that process occurring specifically in migraine and specifically causing structural alterations in the brain that worsen the experience of migraines and worsen the experience of pain through nothing more than how you think about your migraines. So why is this study so important? Um, I think there are, there are, in my mind, three reasons. So the first of those is that uh, mindset really does matter. Uh, in fact, it matters hugely, and I can't overemphasize this enough. Um, so how we think about our, our migraines, how we think about pain, and the stories we tell ourselves about, about them impact us in fundamental ways, so fundamental that they alter the very structure and function of the brain. And those changes can occur in ways that either help us or hurt us. Um, higher degrees of pain catastrophizing clearly hurt us. Um, they, they cause changes that literally enhance our experience of pain. And this is a big reason why I start with mindset as the very first module in the Beast Slayer Training Academy. Because I know from a decade of clinical experience, and this shows the science behind it, that if you ignore this aspect, uh, then you're not ready to implement the other changes because they will likely be futile. Um, my, your mindset uh, will undermine all of those other eff- efforts. So we've tried to set up Migra Neverland and the Beast Slayer Training Academy in a way that maximizes your odds of moving on the timeline of migraine freedom. Um, and making sure mindset is in place first is absolutely essential. So the last thing we want is for folks to put all the time and energy into establishing new habits and behaviors only for their mindset to undermine the entire process. And uh, let me say too, this is not easy. So oftentimes changing mindset means changing patterns of thought uh, you've been reinforcing for much of your life. So it takes time and effort and sustained and dedicated effort and consistent reminders and because it's easy to lapse into old thought patterns. Um, but it's so incredibly worth it, and it will transform your life if you stick with it. Um, the second uh, the key il- thing this, this uh, study illustrates is that recovery is a process. So here we see that the brain of someone with migraines has clear structural and functional changes, and these are changes in multiple domains in multiple parts of the brain. So that means to move on the timeline of, mi- of migraine freedom, we have to change our brain. So if mindset has been an enemy for years and you've been telling yourself the old story of migraine for years, then that has to change. And uh, that change will lead to changes in the brain, but that takes time. But the really fantastic thing is that our brains are capable of changing throughout our lives and capable of remarkable change. And essentially, the Migraine Miracle Plan is about making fundamental changes to your brain. So undoing what's been done from a lifetime uh, with migraines, uh, including the ways in which we've thought about them, uh, along with the effects of drugs uh, and the effects of diets and lifestyles that are mismatched with our biology and so on. So all of those strategies that we know uh, lead to migraine freedom uh, are also designed to sort of undo these structural changes that have occurred in the brain. And those can 
can't happen overnight, right? Uh, those th- those take time to develop and they t- take time to reverse. But the fantastic thing is the b- brain is capable of incredible change. And that's why we keep seeing such incredible results from the folks who stick with it long enough to allow for those kinds of changes to happen. Um, it can't happen overnight. It's physically and biologically impossible, but it can happen for sure with sustained e- effort. And we've seen it time and time again. And then the third thing uh, that I did to take away from this is that um, this study is a great illustration of why we try so hard to maintain a spirit of positivity and hope in our community. So a few years ago, uh, when I kind of went online looking to see what kind of resources and groups were out there for people with migraines, um, I was mortified. Uh, Almost everything I found was just overwhelmingly negative with a really heavy focus on just how awful migraines were and the experience of being a migraineur and just, uh, you know, quotes ruminating on them. And so after seeing this, on the one hand, I, I realized that there there wasn't a place for people like me. So I actually, I personally hate dwelling on migraine and hate dwelling on pain. And I'm, I am one of those who once it's gone, it's gone. I don't want to give it any more attention than it's already gotten. Um, to me, one of the big problems, big issues with migraines or pain in general is that it diverts attention away from the things you care about. Uh, so the last thing I want is to give it any more attention than it's already gotten and divert me away from the things that I care about most. In fact, it's a bit ironic that I ended up writing a book about migraines and and maintain an online community uh, since I I don't really enjoy talking about them when I don't have them. Um, But that's because I know that the the message that we're putting out there um, can help so many people and needs to get to so many people. Um, But it's also why uh, I don't spend time dwelling at all on the negative parts of it. Now, of course, there's a bit of selection bias going on here, right? Because uh, people who don't like to talk about them or ruminate on them on them are less likely to try to go out and find a group of people where they can go talk about them. But what was even more concerning to me was that I knew that these kind of groups, even though they were well-intentioned, were likely making the people in them worse. And a study like this shows precisely why that is. And so one of the reasons we decided to create an online community around the Migraine Miracle was to provide uh, an alternative for folks, uh, both for people like me who didn't want to dwell on the pain but wanted strategies for getting better, uh, who just wanted to slay the thing and move on with their life, uh, but also to provide a place uh, that wasn't secretly sabotaging any chance of recovery uh, through this kind of relentless negativity. So we wanted to create a place that was instead one of hope and support and encouragement and positivity so that we could actually use uh, mindset to our advantage. And so one of the reasons I, I wanted to present this study uh, is because it's such a great illustration of why one of our fundamental missions inside of our community is to create a positive environment. Um, we all know how awful migraines are, and uh, it was kind of like an unspoken you know, thing amongst everybody with them when we don't need to dwell on it because we've all been through it. Um, and we're not focusing on it because we're trying to deny uh, reality. We're not focusing on it because we know that doing so will make us worse. So if we view it in this way, we realize that a, a negative uh, post or comment uh, is no different than running around and spraying people with migraines with uh, some awful perfume or going to their house in the middle of the night and blaring music so they can't sleep. So all these things that we could do that would provoke the beast are the same as, as creating a, a, a negative environment. And our number one goal is to reduce suffering. And we know, and this, this kind of study illustrates why, that uh, a negative uh, environment is going to worsen suffering even though it may be well-intentioned, um, the, the net result is likely to be uh, one we don't want. Um, it's also the same exact reason we sp- I spend so much time talking about the potential downsides of abortive medication and rebound headache. Um, it's not because I want people to suffer more and, and endure uh, a headache without any type of relief. It's, be- it's precisely because I don't want them to suffer more because I've seen it so many times lead to so much more uh, needless suffering. And I should also point out that this is also why I'm such a fan of mindfulness practice. So, like I said before, we can change our brain. uh, And one of the ways we can reshape the the way in which thoughts influence our brain uh, is through mindfulness practice. So uh, it's a way of really uh, targeting in on your mind's ability to work for you uh, rather than against you. 
All right, so hopefully that reinforces just how important mindset is, uh, that we can either be our greatest ally or our greatest enemy, and that we ignore it at our own peril. Um, that recovery is a process and requires structural alterations of, to the brain that take time. Uh, and that this is why we try so hard to maintain a spirit of uh, positivity. And that focusing on the negative aspects of migraine actually make us worse over time. That wraps up this episode. Um, once again, if you want us to help you replace your story of migraine uh, from I'm someone with chronic, awful, horrible headaches to I'm a beast slayer, then we'd love to have you in the Jumpstart Challenge or in uh, Migraine Everland. As I mentioned, we just launched our uh, latest 30-day Jumpstart Challenge. And if you sign up today, you can still get in on this latest challenge. Uh, however, um, Migrant Everland membership gets you access to all of our 30-day challenges, including the next Jumpstart challenge that we'll have, uh, as well as our next uh, Keto Blast challenge, uh, plus all the other uh, resources. So you can learn more again at mymigrainemiracle.com forward slash end of migraine. Also, if you want to see the show notes for this episode, go to mymigrainemiracle.com forward slash mindset. Uh, and I'll also include there a link to this study uh, as well as uh, a link to the um, pain catastrophizing scale so you can see uh, what questions are asked on it. Okay, that's all I've got for today. So go out there and slay the beast. Slay the beast.